mute yours. So. Hello. Oh, that's not going to work. All right. Well, we're going to get that worked out. Regardless, we are now going to begin with open form. So if you would like to come utilize open form, Heather, I see you. You may do so at this time. The microphone is right there. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. Would anyone else like to utilize open forum at this time? All right, seeing that there is no one, we will move into the roll call. If everyone could, if they have not already, please log into the Zoom, which is what your laptops should be being used for, Zoom. All right, and now we will move into the reading and the approval of the minutes. The minutes were sent out electronically. Uh, are there any corrections to the minutes? All right, seeing that there are none, then the minutes are approved and corrected. We will now move into reports of our executive officers, beginning with Rhett Wagner. I have a ton for y'all today. Um, the first thing, and I'm excited to talk about this one, is um, with the, the task force that you've all probably heard about, the Presidential Task Force on Opportunity and Equity, um, one of the first things that we've uh, seen pushed through in my term came out, um, I guess this week, maybe this morning, excuse me, my mask is up crazy, 
Um, but essentially what it was is a diversity statement that was developed in combination from the two different subcommittees that we have existing. Um, basically what it is, is it embodies Auburn's stance on the essentiality of DEI efforts. Um, it's a, just a generalized statement um, that will be used kind of in prominent places on our university web pages. It'll be featured in some upcoming news articles. Um, and the reason I'm kind of telling you about this is one, so you know, I was, you know, I've been doing those meetings for the past few weeks. But the other one is, the reason it's important that SGA plays a part in that committee is because of the four shared governance groups. That's the model that Auburn University uses to you know, run Auburn. Um, and essentially what that means is there's a group representing all of our main popula uh, populations. There's Student Senate, which is us, well, SGA, which is you know, Senate and Captain and everything, but that's us. Um, and then there's Faculty Senate, which represents the faculty. There's one for staff, and then there's one for administration. And so for any like major decision to get made here at Auburn, it has to go through all four of those. So I'll tell you this to say that we, we talked about it in exact, made the recommendations we found necessary, um, and gave our approval to that uh, diversity statement. So as the year goes on, there's gonna be more things that come through where Dr. Guzz will say, I want the approval of the four shared governance groups before we really move forward with this. And so in a lot of those circumstances, I'm gonna come here to y'all um, and kind of explain the situations that are coming. The next update I have is uh, we've started our breakfast with Mayor Anders and a few representatives from the city. That was last Friday. And in the future, those will be held once a month um, on, the, on the second Friday of the month. So essentially, some of the things we talked about was, um, first, some of our goals that we have for the year and how we can coordinate with the city. Um, kind of just made him uh, aware of some of the stuff that might be happening in SJ this year. Um, and we'll continue doing that as we go. And he also just kind of shared some of his concerns with us. One big thing we're working on right now as well is the AU 2040 plan. You've probably heard about that from last year um, or in the news. Um, and if not, I'd encourage you to Google it. But it's essentially, um, the whole motive is what is Auburn, the city, gonna look like in the year 2040? Um, so there's eight committees that'll be a part of that plan and they're gonna kind of just do some research and discussion and set forth the path that Auburn will likely follow for the next 20 years. And as we go through that, there's going to be a couple students placed onto each committee. Um, and so, again, like I said, in the future, we might be contacting you, especially if you're here in the summer. So if you are here in the summer and interested, please reach out to me. Um, we're going to be placing students on each of those committees. And that's really special because that's not something the city had to do, but it's something they wanted to do to make sure we're getting impact from students, since we are a large percentage of this city. Um, Next thing up is the Office of Sustainability at Auburn um, has developed kind of like a report. Um, this report is essentially, like an, they call it the Executive Report for Sustainability. It's an overview of what the office does as well as a timeline looking forward to like some of the goals they have to accomplish in the next few years. I was uh, informed of that this morning. I thought it was super interesting. So if any of y'all um, are interested to see what that has to say, shoot me an email after this is over. I'm gonna be happy to send that to you your way so you can discuss it in, per, um, in more detail. Oh, also, if you're interested in seeing the div uh, diversity statement developed by the group, email me about that one as well. It was kind of long, so I didn't want to read it up here, but I'll be happy to share that with y'all. Um, next up is an exciting report from uh, Dr. Gaiman this morning. She said that um, we have seen a 30 increase in the scholarships offered to underrepresented students. Has talked about a lot um, is you know funding for underrepresented students or finding a way to get more scholarships out there. I think it's really cool to look at something that's been discussed for a year or multiple years now um, and see that it was you know increased by 30 33 percent just about. So that's exciting. And then the last thing is um, if y'all remember when you were at Camp War Eagle, if you did go to Camp War Eagle, um, the ever five courses you had to do. I don't know if they were ever five back then, but they are now. I don't know if they were when I was there, but they are now. And essentially, um, what it is, is you used to do an EEO, and it's an AA, I think it's Alcohol Awareness is what that stands for, two courses that are mandated by the state, that we have to take those before you become a student at a public institution. Um, those are mandatory by law. Another thing that was just added to that is a new DEI course that's going to be strong. It's you know not required by law, so it's strongly recommended, um, but it'll be paired with the other two. And we're hoping that through that, a lot of students take it just because it's there. And so I think that's another huge development um, with the uh, efforts on campus. And so I, I make all those reports just in saying, you know, I came in last week and told you about some of the meetings I go to. And I'm hoping that I can continue to give you all these updates week by week of, of what's going on in, in my week. And so if you all ever have questions on this stuff, feel free to shoot me an answer, especially if you want to see that sustainability executive report or if you want to see um, the diversity statement. I'd be happy to show those.
Exactly. Thank you, Red. Mr. Tyler Ward. Good. I see. I'll update you guys uh, just so like everyone that's not up here. One thing that I'm working on with happening is uh, take this with JD, and so his senator should be receiving a report soon. But basically, you will get an email this week saying who your directors and cabinet that you're going to work directly with are. What that needs to do is over the next couple of weeks, we're really going to be trying to build relationships with the administrators so that when we head into the summer, we have a very identified plan and those relationships are built. Because the summer is really pertinent when it comes to even the things that we want to see through because the administration is still here, the students aren't. But that's going to be very, very difficult. We haven't built those relationships yet. And so we're really going to be trying to grind out meeting with those administrators and different things like that over the next couple of weeks. And so be on the lookout, text the person that's in, that is your director, get a bunch of time, whatever you need to do. Another thing that I want to say is that when it comes to feedback and research, especially with what Brett was talking about, for Camp Regal, like y'all have people that are going to be um, counselors in this very room, I'll be there as well. Utilize them. If there's anything that y'all want to get feedback from in the coming class, anything that y'all want to get to the outgoing class, whatever that needs to do, make sure y'all are utilizing the centers and the chemical counselors that you have in this room. Um, kind of from what my perspective was is that she was giving some updates on the 24 program as well, so we'll be looking about that as we kind of wrap up. What we want our executive goals to look like from Claudia's, Claudia's end and for y'all to know. Next week, we are doing headshots that will be on the website. So you guys make sure that you go get your hair down or whatever it needs to look like. Go get a cut, JD, on that Um, kidding, 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 kidding. But uh, those pictures will be next week, so make sure that y'all want to look out for that. Um, I'm looking as pretty as possible. I think that's it. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tyler. Ooh, it seems that there are no other executive officers here, and so because of that, I will not hold you all waiting. And we will move into the reports from our um, liaisons, correct? Colleges. colleges? Sorry, you guys. We'll move into the reports of our colleges, beginning with at large. I feel like I always forget them, so I was like, they go after that. They don't. Matthews at large, noted I will bring your hairbrush to sit in every week from now on. Mm. Oh, okay. Anyways, I just got back from the safety walk. I had to leave it a little early. Um, it was great seeing all the students and administrators and officers hanging out, kind of talking, introducing each other. Um, the three lights that I was able to go to worked, which is the right spot, so that's a success. Um, but the safety walk is really a great thing that Kevin used to put on. Next thing, Senator Jones is finalizing with cabinet a Qualtrics survey about study room slash divs, the whole website on how you reserve a room. And that'll be sent out during finals, which is gonna be one of the most used times for study rooms most likely, as students are trying to study on campus and get away from their rooms or whatever. So when we get that out, please publicize that and send the link out and just let people know that that survey will be coming out. Um, and then for our office hours on Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be in the rec this week trying to gather feedback from people who go to the Turn so the down if you can. I'm so or anything that y'all want us to try and gather feedback on related, related, please send that our way. Thank you. Thank you, John David. At large, so the next one would be agriculture. Awesome, thank you. The College of Business. Brown Business. Um, I don't have a lot, this is some good news. Dibs is hopefully expected to be implemented, implemented in HHH before finals. And then um, some of us that were able to attend, we went to our business school council meeting ourselves, explain what we're working on and some of our goals, and kind of what we would love for them to work on and partner with them. Um, so 
we're going to partner with them on like vending machine we're all going to work on say on a business student newsletter so just things like that so we're excited to work with them and so we're going to be very open on this year so we're going to see if they can get done thank you CAD C Well, thank you, Senator Harris. That is absolutely awesome. And now you'll hear from COSAM. Cooper, COSAM. Uh, so nobody came to my office hours today. So during this time, I spoke with school's council president, Maggie Nicholson. And she is making the final touches to COSAM's platform and positions on AU involved. Uh, also, with finals coming up, COSAM is encouraging students to utilize all the resources that Auburn has to offer, such as the time management workshops, SI sessions, and peer tutoring. Uh, that's it for me. I hope you all have a great week. Thank you, Carter. Education. Uh-oh. All right. Engineering. Kyla is at Greek Sing, I think, so it's all good. So, what do you want to do? 
And the ticket was, it literally said drive through six and campus. That was what I had to do. So apparently I called, because that was not for half of And um, you can't drive through Central Campus at all without a permit. So, like, I don't have a parking permit, but I, since I was even on Central Campus, that's reason for me to get a So, She's right. <laughs> I didn't know that. Apparently, signs are posted. I took a picture of one of them. It still says parking, but I don't know. Parking services and driving services, that was just pretty much So, if anyone else is feeling like has experienced that, um, please let me know. I'd love to work with drivers with people parking. I have to that out. So. Thank you, Emma Kate. We will now hear from Megan, who had an incident with a rabid raccoon. I do not lie. Hey, Megan. So I work in school for forestry and wildlife sciences. How's that raccoon? Uh, I did she have can't an hear me. with a rabid raccoon today, so I'm on Zoom. Um, so for me, this past Thursday, our school's council, meet, our school's council had a meeting um, in which we discussed kind of our summer plans and what kind of event we're wanting to host at the end of the semester. We will be meeting again this coming Thursday, but this time it'll be our newest schools council members, so me and our upcoming president and vice president. Um, we just want to meet to discuss our game plan for this upcoming year so that we can best be prepared to hit the ground running for welcome week in the fall. Um, as for my office hours, I had a student from the Plainsman reach out to me um, for an article she's writing on the bird project that was started earlier this semester. Uh, so I spent that a lot of time answering her questions. Well, thank you, Megan. And I'd like to remind everyone, please do let us know what happened during your office hours during these reports. We will now move to the grad school. And Miss Elizabeth DeVore. Yes, yes. Hello, Miss Elizabeth. Everyone give a warm welcome. This is Elizabeth's first Senate as the new graduate school senator. Very excited to have her here. Big shoes to fill. Brian was a legend among the Senate floor. Um, and so, yes, there's your microphone. Thank you. I wasn't sure if I was talking to or not. <laughs> um, yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, I am the new graduate school senator. Uh, I, I guess this last week, um, since I'm now on the academic affairs committee, I'm sorry to you, graduate students who are looking forward to having classes back in person. Um, uh, my advisor is probably one of the worst offenders of like sending really long asynchronous videos. So, um, I think people are looking forward to having the in-person option again. Um, there's some work I was just catching up on since the work that Academic Affairs is doing. Um, and then also there's some efforts regarding advisor and mentorship for graduate students that I'm going to continue to work on for this year. Thank you so much. And Elizabeth has experience in schools council, so anyone who has questions can also go to her as well. Thank you. Human sciences. One day I'm going to have them memorized. One day. Thank you. Liberal Arts. Belcher, okay. Liberal Arts. So, I don't have much uh, this week, but uh, Casey and I have added an additional time, so we're going to send that to uh, for our office hours. So that will be in Kitchener. It's also on Wednesday, but it's in the morning, so we people can't meet like that afternoon, like crunch time that we have. Uh, we can have that in the morning. So we have that for the first time. Uh, we sort of blocked that out. And so we, that is uh, in correspondence with the school's council president. So we've been talking about 
how now that their whole council is paid, how we can sort of work on some implementation things. I know the dean is working uh, really hard on this um, initiative about uh, internships and requiring a mandatory internship for all liberal arts students. So we're sort of looking at uh, ways to implement that for like um, needs-based sort of things and figuring all that out. So I'll talk about that later in my DEI report. Um, I also want to talk about late night dining. Uh, if any of you other folks went. Oh, it's spectacular. It was nice. It was a nice little ambiance experience. All of that. Uh, it was a lot better when we have tables in the hall. Um, the place to sit that's not on the ground. But it's kind of you know, urban sitting on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I really want to focus my office hour on this week is really collecting feedback from people because I know a lot of people did have a lot to say. Uh, all good things. It was really great that they were sort of selling out of all their items and all that sort of stuff. So I think this is really looking at the Awesome, thank you, Brandon. Nursing? Thank you, Mary Logan. Pharmacy. Oh, and she was ready. Thank you. Me, Pharmacy. So this week I've been collecting um, the names of students who've been helping with COVID testing and also COVID-19 vaccinations, just so we can work on accommodation for those students eventually, because they didn't quite fit in the nursing accommodation that is coming up on the future orders. And then also I've been working with our school's council to make little goodie bags for all of our students uh, during the finals week. Thank you. Vet Med? Lauren, Vet Med. Um, so I did my little, um, not goodie bag, but with my little ones, there's little skittles. I put those in um, our mailboxes, so hopefully people will have more of an idea of what we do. Um, my office hours got messed up this week uh, because I hold my office hours with my students' council so that we can all meet at the same time and be available to students. Um, but the owner of Hellink, uh, the president, um, she was held in surgery lab, so unfortunately I didn't get feedback. Um, but we did meet and we did talk about our goals for the upcoming semester because um, we want to hold a meeting and a couple um, events. So that's Thank you. Thank you. That will conclude our college reports. And we'll now move into the reports of this and I'll move into the reports of the standing committees and that will begin with academic affairs. McElroy from the Lord. So this week in academic affairs, um, we're still working on getting that survey for our campus calendar initiative. We met with Cabot about the rentable laptops project. Um, we're brainstorming creative ways to gather feedback. So if any of y'all have any thoughts on like a creative way that we could get feedback, we would love if you would share that with our team. We are also having a meeting, and it's set tomorrow at 1 with Dr. Martin to discuss our feedback with him. Um, and then we welcome Senator DeVore. We're so glad to have you with us, um, already contributing on academic affairs, giving us a little change, um, helping us be a little bit more clear in the resolution that we're bringing forward. And then our consistency and accountability for fall 2021 resolution is coming through today. So your eyes will be that Thank you, Gavin. We will now move into academic affairs, I mean budget and finance, excuse me. Reese is not here, but Jabin's going to present on her behalf. Justin, Justin Engineering. First of all, Senator Elizabeth would like to apologize for not being here tonight. So last week, the Budget and Finance Committee worked on initial budgets and getting familiar with them so that our student financial representatives would come to us for any questions that they needed over the summer. Now, later tonight, you will see a commendation from Senator Logan regarding nursing students and their efforts uh, in terms of vaccinations and testing. If you have any questions, please send them to Senator Logan or Senator Elizabeth. One last final point is our committee meeting 
got moved to 2 p.m. in the student involvement suite on Friday. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Justin. We will now move into the Code of Laws report. Oh, Jamie, Megan is, Megan, we can't hear you yet. One second, I apologize. You're good to go. Okay, sorry guys. Um, Senator Mather also could not be here tonight, so she's having me give her report. Um, so first of all, Senator Turnipsey is still working on the timeline, and all of our committee members are gonna review that before our meeting tomorrow and we'll come with any feedback or questions for that. So we're getting it finalized, which is great. Um, Senator McDonald and I, we're, con we're continuing with reformatting Schools Council, and we've decided to split everything up into three different chapters, uh, chapter 500, 501, and 502. Um, these will have the absence policy as well as the definition of the Executive Director of Schools Council. Senators Dickinson and Mackner have split up some of the election law code changes that are just minor clarifications, and they're working on drafting those bills, so look forward to those. We also all reached out to our respective schools councils this week and got some feedback on how they feel about attending several Senate meetings per semester, and we're coming to our meeting tomorrow with that feedback. Awesome, thank you, Megan. That leaves, not doesn't leave, but diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you, Brandon, and as John David comes up here for student affairs, I ask that you give him your undivided attention. As you should with everyone who comes up here. Matthews at large, first off athletics, Jake is looking into partnering with UPC about having a concert after a football game next fall. We're really excited to see if we can get that to actually pan out. Those facilities, Ryland's email and exec. system or security cameras would be more feasible in larger rooms in the residency halls. 
and the feasibility of putting ice machines in residency halls as well, and maybe having a centralized location for that. So maybe just having one ice machine in the quad center for the quad and lights over the other residency halls. Um, on the housing note, as finals approaches and after finals move out, for our campus students will be happening, and we really want to partner with housing to help push the uh, donation of items that you don't want to take with you. So maybe you have a futon in your residency hall and maybe you're moving to a fully furnished apartment. You just can donate that to housing and they can give that to a student next fall. Um, on the dining note, uh, I hope that all y'all know that Late Night Dining had their first weekend last week. Please send me or Lucy any feedback as the most changes are going to be able to happen from now until Thursday, going into the second week, trying to figure out, hey, this is what we did really well. This needs to be implemented, maybe a trash can in this location, working on getting seating. Not sure if we will be able to have that available until the fall. But any feedback that you have, please send it my way. And I think that is all. Oh, on the, on the late night dining, we will know which food truck will be for Thursday on Tuesday. So. We'll find out each Tuesday what the subsequent food truck will be. Thank you all. Have a great week. Thank you, the executive committee. And there's many of your faces who haven't been there. As I've said every week, um, you are required to take at least one a semester. Um, so if you have not, this is your last chance to avoid an absence. Um, with that being said, we will be moving into Summer Senate um, in the coming um, weeks. Of course, on an email that had some of the dates. The first one will be March 10th, so there won't be too much of a layoff. May 10th. Um, May. May 10th, not March. That's not in the summer. Um, <laughs> So there won't be too much of a layoff. So be expecting that um, with each um, Senate meeting, you'll be taking up a committee meeting the week before, just like the time of week. You do a committee, week, committee meeting to prepare for the Senate meeting. Um, so be planning on having um, a committee meeting at some point the week after finals. Um, but your committee chair will be um, talking to you all about that, of course. Um, and then the last thing is, um, so there is a future order for the confirmation of O board members. Um, o board's first. Start giving out money. Um, and seeing as their meeting is tomorrow, um, I would now like to move to suspend the rules of orders to move PSSB 2104191, Organizations Board Confirmations, from a future order to a current order. A motion has been made to move this into a current order of business. Is there a second? Is there any debate? Seeing that there is no debate, then this order has been moved to a future order, current order, excuse me. Thank you, Graf. Well, that will conclude our reports from our standing committees, meaning that we will now move into reports from liaisons. I do apologize. And we will begin with Luke Owens from the Honors College. Owens, Honors Congress liaison. So we are going to be hosting Freshman Ignite on Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. It has been a rough year for freshmen due to the college experience, and we are doing this to give freshmen the chance to come, hang out, and celebrate all they have accomplished through this challenging year. We ask that you please encourage all your freshman constituents to join us and participate in something called freshman shoutouts. If they find a freshman deserving of all the hard work they put in, they can put in a note for them to read at the link aub.ie slash shout out. We are so excited to host this, so we again ask that you please encourage this upcoming event. 
We are hosting media and spirit chair interviews this week and last week at our first in-person meeting. Those who came were super eager to get involved and join committees. And last thing, last Saturday, we had our first philanthropy event and in my eye, in, sorry, in my eyes, that deserves a mega shout out. We built Easter eggs and set up for House Esperanza's egg hunt at Gateway Church. I'd like to say, I think I got this right, that we took the time and hit over 1,000 eggs inside that church. Wow. This group, I'm glad to say, takes pride in working with and giving back to our beloved Auburn of Alaska community, and I would like this to take this opportunity to give two of to that group. We are hoping that this hard work will skyrocket our philanthropy wing into next semester and establish a stable community for years to come. Committee. Thank you all so much, and I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Thank you, Luke. I hope the same for you. We will now move into our report from Mr. Donovan Evans for the Black Student Union. Thank you so much. And finally, we will hear from Miss. Oh wait, not finally. I apologize. We'll hear from Miss Leah Stewart from the Student Veterans Association. Thank you, Leah. I think I will be making an appearance myself. And finally, we have the freshman committee. Who, my, are they done now? Okay, so it was finally Miss Leah Stewart. I apologize. Well, thank you. That concludes our reports from our standing liaisons. We will now move into current orders of business. So the first item on the agenda tonight is going to be PSSB 21041201 presented by Megan Starling. And I will now mute myself so Megan can speak. Starling School of Forestry and Wildlife Sciences. Um, so I presented this last week. It's just removing that one sentence from this portion of the Code of Laws to specify that the printer name does not need to be on campaign materials anymore. To me this week with any questions, but does anyone have any now? You'll need you'll need to read that. You'll need to read that in full and then motion. I ask for approval of the following. With the exception of gimmicks, all campaign material must contain a candidate's name, voting date, and position sought. The approved logo slash design must be consistent in all campaign material and specific to the candidate. She passed this bill as written. Don't need, don't need oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, we, there does need to be a period added to this. Correct? It's just a period. Second. Motion to make an amendment to the bill. Yes. So, will you say I move to? I move to add a period at the end of candidate to this bill. Is there a second? 
Thank you. We need to vote on the amendment. Oh, we need to vote on the amendment. All right. All, well, we have to vote on it first. Everyone get in the chat. All those in favor of accepting the amendment as it has been stipulated by Mr. John David Matthews, please say aye and comment yes. All of those opposed to this amendment, please say no and comment no. The ayes have it, and this amendment is adopted. Thank you, Graf. And now, Megan, can you motion to um, approve this one? Sorry, too early. I motion to pass this bill as written. Is there a second? Second. It is moved and seconded to adopt the bill just as read. Is there any debate? I asked if there's debate. Is there, do you have debate? Yes. My bad, I thought you were reading your bill. Sorry, ignore me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, so, just one quick question. I know a lot of um, election law is reactionary, not proactive, um, meaning that a lot of it's passed because something in the past has caused them to write a bill about it. Do you know why they, in the past, required the logo to be on the um, campaign material and why, by removing this, that, that is no longer necessary? Um, yes, so in the past, they've just required the logo to be on there, um, sort of as confirmation that uh, candidates aren't printing off of the school printers. They're supposed to go somewhere else for that. Um, but in the past, it's also just proven to give a lot of um, People have reported it on a lot of candidates' campaign materials, but it's not on there. So the election board has to just go through all those just minimal minimal reports, and it's just been a lot on them. So um, our new executive director is just saying, let's remove that and just hold them accountable based off of their itemized receipts that they already have to turn in to the election board. Awesome. Thank you so much for that clarification. Is there any further debate? Seeing that there is no further debate, we will now move into a vote. All those in favor of passing this bill as written, please say aye and comment yes into the chat. All of those opposed to passing this bill as written, please say no and comment no. The ayes have it, and this bill is adopted. We will now move into the second item of the night, which is PSSB 21041202, presented to you by Megan Starling. Yeah. Starling School of Forestry and Wildlife Sciences. So this is just a bill that's asking, uh, I ask the approval of the following, James Troy Redwell School of Forestry and Wildlife Sciences School of Council President. We're just going to confirm him tonight. Um, so with that, I motion to pass this bill as written. Is there a second? Second. The bill has been seconded. Uh, is there any debate? Yeah. Sorry. Is there any debate? All right. Seeing that there is no further debate, we will now move into a vote. All those in favor of passing this bill as written, please say aye and comment yes into the chat. All of those opposed, please say no and comment no. The ayes have it and the bill is adopted as written. We will now move into our third item of the night, PSSB 21041203, presented to you by Graf Sullivan. Sullivan, engineer. Thank you. Uh, I ask approval of following. Alan Lee, Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs, Franny Gordon, Assistant Vice President of Athletics, Laura Malone, Assistant Vice President of Campus Live, Peyton Billingsley, Assistant Vice President of University Operations, Jay Darling, Assistant Vice President of Finance, Ellis Sharp, Assistant Vice President of Golden Rings, Jordan Branchman, Assistant Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Abby Ronson, Assistant Vice President of External Affairs, Jordan Fluger, Assistant Vice President of Feedback and Assessment, 
Carson Evans, Assistant Vice President of Outreach Programs, Emma Line Jones, Assistant Vice President of Media Operations, Amy Beeson, Assistant Vice President of Communications and Marketing, William Jack Scott, Assistant Vice President of Cabinet Administration, Mary Kate Hillis, Executive Director of Elections, Mary Kate Saddle, Executive Director, Director of Schools Council. Are there any questions? Is there a second? The bill is seconded. Is there any debate? Seeing that there is no further debate, we will now move into a vote. All those in favor of passing this bill, please say aye and comment yes into the chat. Aye. All of those opposed, please say no and comment no. The ayes have it and the bill is adopted as written. We will now move into the third order of, or fourth, my apologies, current order of business for the evening, PSSB 2104-1204, presented by Graf Sullivan. I ask for approval of the following. Kelsey Green, Director of Bobby, Mary Frances Moore, Director of Bobby, Lauren Short, Director of Bobby, Bailey Snead, Director of Bobby, Maggie Daniel, Director of Freshman Forum, John David Barnett, Assistant Director of Freshman Forum, Brett Block, Assistant Director of Freshman Forum. Corey Atkins, Assistant Director of Freshman Forum. Helen Ann Herndon, Director of Recruitment. Coleman Morris, Director of Recruitment. Richard Maddox, Director of External Communication. Braxton Rich, Director of External Communication. Georgia Ma, Director of Internal Communication. Campbell Govion, Director of Internal Communication. Betsy Tartan, Director of Photography. Vivian Stabler, Director of Photography. Laurie Wakefield, Director of Photography. Jillian Diary, Director of Social Media. Ellie Harder, Director of Social Media. Keith McNeil, Director of Videography. Charles Galt, Director of Videography. Brady Natoli, Director of Videography. William Watts, Director of Web Development. Ali Sizemore, Director of Auburn Rings. Payne Thrift, Director of Auburn Rings. Joshua Quadabon, Director of Auburn Rings. Rebecca Long, Director of Auburn Rings. Maggie McDuffie, Director of Auburn Rings. Kinsley Brewis, Director of Auburn Rings. Rohan Sen, Director of Financial Projects. Miller King, Director of Financial Projects. Mary Kate Stanford, Director of Financial Projects. Projects. Annie Tiki, Director of Financial Projects. Sierra Berry, Director of Academic Initiatives. Kylie Seferin, Director of Academic Initiatives. Olivia Zellner, Director of Academic Initiatives. Ivan Glatov, Director of Academic Initiatives. Fisher Rossman, Director of Athletic Initiatives. Jonathan Han, Director of Organizational Seating Program. Draper Watson. Assistant Director of Organizational Seating Program, Katie Ronsbacher, Assistant Director of Organizational Seating Program, Wynn Jones, Assistant Director of Organizational Seating Program, Kaylee Phillips, Director of Campus Dining, Jay Grosdick, Director of Campus Dining, Emily Bruder, Director of Health and Wellness, Bryce Bernard, Director, Assistant Director of Health and Wellness, Taylor Godwin, Director of University Housing, Meredith Forrester, Director of Facility Projects, Tucker Brandt, Director of Information Technology, Michael Linden, Director of Parking and Transportation. Kyle Fuller, Director of Parking and Transportation. Matt Wilson, Director of Safety Initiatives. Anna Lincoln, Director of Sustainability. Anna Coker, Director of City Relations. Olivia Sutherland, Assistant Director of City Relations. Wendy Strong, Director of Civic Engagement. Sam Stokely, Director of Civic Engagement. Gwen Charles, Director of Governmental Relations. Cole Stacy, Assistant Director of Governmental Relations. Megan Watkins, Director of Auburn Answers. Chloe Grace Cochran, Director of Auburn, Grants, Auburn Answers. Jake Fresnelli, Director of Research and Assessment. Graham Sanson, Director of Research and Assessment. Owen Kilpatrick, Director of Research and Assessment. Eliza Cordell, Director of Payday, Creedate, and Fall Feast. Jackson Smith, Assistant Director of Payday, Creedate, and Fall Feast. Charlie Flurry, Assistant Director of Payday, Creedate, and Fall Feast. Madison Allen, Assistant Director of Payday, Creedate, and Fall Feast. Courtney Cooner, Assistant Director of Payday, Creedate, and Fall Feast. Andy Skidaki, Director of Outreach Projects. Catherine Downs, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Outreach. Lauren Lindsay, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Projects. Emma Warner, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Projects. So I know we did notice last week that Chloe Grace Cochran was still wrong. Um, does anybody, did anybody else find any areas in spelling? Uh, Pearson. I did, I did. You made, made a motion 
questions or can they be corrected through someone's given name? Cool. That's awesome. It's absolutely great for our brand. Anybody else notice any names? that notice. It is. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Seeing that all the names have been corrected, does anyone have any questions about this confirmation? Seeing none, I move to pass this bill through. Is there a second? It is moved and seconded to adopt the bill as just read. Is there any debate? Seeing that there is no further debate, we will move into a vote. All of those in favor of passing this bill just as read, please say aye and comment yes. Aye. All of those opposed, please say no and comment no. With that, the ayes have it and the bill is adopted. We will now move into our fifth current order of the evening. PSSB 21041205, presented by Graf Sullivan. I ask, of a prop, I ask for approval of the following. Olichu Owiki, Graduate Schools Council President. Chindima Odili, Graduate Schools Council Vice President. Elizabeth Zavor, Graduate School Senator. Any questions? Seeing that, I move to pass this bill as written. Is there a second? It is moved and seconded. Is there a second to this bill? Second. It is moved and seconded to adopt the bill just as read. Is there any debate? Seeing that there is no further debate, we will move into a vote. All those in favor, please say aye and comment yes. All of those opposed, please say no and comment no. The ayes have it, and the bill is adopted as read. Thank you, Graf. We will now move into future orders of business. Oh, yes, my apologies. The sixth current order of the evening, um, and that will be, I guess technically, PSSB 21041901, presented by Graf Sullivan. I ask for approval of the following. Addie Cardwell, Organizations Board. Samantha Jeter, Organizations Board, Cole Stacy, Organizations Board, Sarah Stevenson, Organizations Board, Sloan Zimmerick, Organizations Board. Um, so just for some context, yes, in the code, Organizations Board does not have an apostrophe. Um, and then kind of the way this process went about was it was a position applied for an AU involved. Um, they took applications and they took interviews and it has since been decided. Organizations Board is typically seven members. There's five confirmations because two are returning this year. Um, the other two are already there, they don't need to be confirmed. And then, uh, yes, I believe that's, no, it's a, oh yeah, it moves up because they need to be um, confirmed before their meeting tomorrow. So, any questions that I didn't understand? Updates, updates love the plan until it's passed. All right, seeing no other questions, I'm going to pass this bill Is there a second? It is moved and seconded to adopt the bill just as read. Is there any debate? Seeing that there is no further debate, we will move into a vote. All those in favor, please say aye and comment yes. Aye. All of those opposed, please say no and comment no. The ayes have it and the bill is adopted. That will conclude our current orders of business for the evening. And we will now move into our future orders of business. 
beginning with PSSR 21041901, Consistency and Accountability for Fall 2021 Academics. We combined at the end. You did? Okay. Mm -hmm. so Presented by Mr. McElroy. Awesome. So, consistency and accountability for fall 2021 academics. Um, this resolution was written to address numerous student concerns during the past two semesters. I know y'all have been hearing it a lot from your constituents. Um, however, it took you know a long time to put together a thorough response. However, I believe that we've done it with this resolution. Um, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory as I read through it. However, uh, if anyone sees an area they're concerned about or have some you know, opposing student feedback for, I'm gonna stay up here after for any initial questions or comments y'all might have. But, go ahead and read it. So, whereas Auburn University's A Healthier U states that the added stresses of dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic often can lead to depression, loneliness, and other mental health issues and Whereas increased isolation due to reduced face-to-face -face interaction during the fall 2020 and spring 2021 semesters exacerbates these challenging mental health issues, especially for students adjusting to being on their own for the first time, living in a new city, or facing the challenges of keeping pace with elite academic programs like those present at Auburn University. And whereas in the fall of 2020 and spring of 2021, many of the numerous Auburn University academic classes were unilaterally moved from the modality of face-to-face -to, -face to a virtual modality and, whereas in the fall of 2020 and spring of 2021, most Alabama high schools safely returned to face-to-face -face classroom instruction with effective protocols in place similar to Auburn University protocols and, whereas in a fall of 2020 student government association Auburn Answers poll, 72.5% of the 58 respondents stated that there has been an increased workload in their virtual classes over what they would expect in a face-to-face -face class and. Whereas SGA and Senate office hour student discussions and Auburn answer submissions have indicated that many Auburn University face-to-face -face flexible classes shifted between the modalities of face-to-face, -face, online synchronous, and online asynchronous numerous times throughout the course of the semester, resulting in confusion in many students regarding their attendance and Whereas SGA Senate office hours, student discussions, and Auburn answer submissions have indicated students having significant issues regarding consistent class meeting times, instructor office hours, online exams scheduled outside of a designated class time, and assignment predictability slash deadlines for classes that were unilaterally moved from face-to-face -face into a virtual modality and Whereas peer institutions, including but not limited to the universities of Florida, Texas, Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama, have officially announced plans to transition to near to normal or traditional operations and in-person instruction for academic classes in fall 2021 and. Whereas the Auburn University Office of the Red Star has outlined the instructional methods for fall 2021 Auburn University academic classes as campus, online asynchronous, and online synchronous, with no face-to-face -face flexible or bended instruction blended instructional modalities listed and, whereas according to data updated April 1st, 2021, the Alabama Department of Public Health has designated Lee County as low risk on its COVID-19 risk indicator and, whereas according to data updated April 1st, 2021 from the Alabama Department of Public Health, Lee County is meeting its testing goals with 32.05% of Lee County's population having already received one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and, Whereas as of March 26, 2021, the East Alabama Medical Center has administered 62,192 COVID-19 vaccinations and whereas according to the Auburn University COVID-19 Resource Center, students at Auburn University have not registered a positivity rate above 0.2% for the COVID-19 virus through Sentinel testing program in any week subsequent to February 7, 2021 and Whereas according to Auburn University's COVID-19 Resource Center data from March 29, 2021, Auburn University is expected to receive enough vaccine doses for the entire campus community with 6,616 first doses and 5,260 second doses of the COVID-19 vaccine having already been administered. Therefore, let it be resolved that we, the Auburn University Student Senate, ask that face-to-face -face campus classes return as the standard fall 2021 instructional modality and that no classes be unilaterally moved from face-to-face -to, -face to a virtual modality without an imminent threat to student faculty safety. And 
Therefore, let it be re further resolved that we, the Auburn University Student Senate, ask that in the event a face-to-face slash campus class is moved to a virtual modality, that the same uniformity be kept for class meeting times, test times, office hours, and the workload assigned by the instructor, as they would have been in a face-to-face slash campus modality, and therefore let it be further resolved that we, the Auburn University Student Senate, ask that in the event a face-to-face slash -face campus class is moved to a virtual modality, that all classes are taught live over Zoom and not pre-recorded in order to preserve student interaction and as the Auburn Creek leads the human touch. Thank you. Are there any questions? Lightning vision, thank you. Get back twice and see if it, uh, it might have just. Oh, okay. Are there any further questions? Will you note that? Yeah, sorry, Graf. You just note that for later? Yeah. Because I can't see, it's not red. It's not red. Thank you. We will now move into the second future order of the evening, being PSSC 21041901, Commendation of Auburn University School of Nursing, and this will be presented by Mary Logan Sefton. Thank you, Mary Logan. Are there any questions? All right. Thank you. This concludes our future orders for the evening. And now we will have our announcements. I guess I will begin. What's up, you guys? I'm very thankful for all of you being so willing to adjust the location, the time for this evening from what I've heard from the messages I've received from Tyler and then what Michael said as he walked back in, I think that the safety walk was a great success. So thank you all for allowing that to happen by moving to this location and this time. It's very impressive, thank you. Uh, thank you also all for the material that's being presented every single week in both your office hour reports and then as future and current orders. I'm very proud of the work that you all have been doing thus far. Um, I guess moving into these last few weeks of school, I'm gonna remind you that yes, school does come first. I personally have been guilty about that recently. Don't lose sight of what's at the end of the tunnel. Senate is there and these resolutions and bills and accommodations are as well, but your degree should be the thing that you see the most. So make sure you push through and do well on finals. Please let me know if there's anything that I can do for you from now until then. My plate has some room, uh, and I know that if it doesn't, I can definitely allocate that to somebody else in this room or to one of our members of the executive team. Thank you all for a wonderful Monday evening. Pearson, do you have anything? Thanks, Paul. Uh, a couple of quick things for me. Along with what Paul said, grades do come first, so please make sure these last few weeks we are finishing strong um, on all of our finals. Also, with that, as student senators, you do need to be uh, to serve as student senate, you do need to represent uh, the college that you are, are a part of. So if you do know this summer you plan on changing majors and switching out of your school or college, uh, please let me know so we can 
uh, find someone to then serve in your place this uh, upcoming fall. Uh, also, I uh, want to talk about honor ceremony. So some of y'all should have received plaques uh, when y'all came in. Every year, SGA recognizes an outstanding student and faculty member from every school and college. Uh, we weren't able to host that ceremony in person this year, so we digitally recognize them and then have told uh, each of the recipients that their plaques would be delivered to a member of Senate. And so if you received that or someone else in your college did, we do ask that y'all find a time during y'all's office hours to go together and present their plaques or uh, to both the student and faculty members and their email addresses are on the back of their plaques. Just let me know if y'all have any questions on that. Last thing, uh, over this upcoming week, I know y'all have what I believe is the first resolution of this term. Yes. And so make sure that y'all are truly using this week to be gathering feedback on that. So y'all's reports next week should really look at school and college reports of y'all talking about, hey, here's how we presented this resolution to our constituents. Here's the feedback we received in talking about uh, what y'all heard so that y'all are voting based on what the people that elected y'all to do. So uh, thank y'all in advance for getting those materials sent out quickly uh, so that students uh, and Senate can use the next week uh, to have that and gather feedback. So thank y'all for all of y'all's great work. And then we've got one more meeting next week in the Student Act. Uh, I'm excited to finish it on. Turn it over, Jamie. Thank you. Jamie, do you want my mic?
Thank you, Jamie. With that, I will ask you all the same thing I always ask, which is to be smart and safe and utmost, be kind, and we have cupcakes. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>